Drew York Show, live from the Eden Center. I can't believe I'm saying that. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, this is a really special episode. I, I only met our special guest today a few weeks ago, and he'd always been introduced to me as a, a legend locally. Um, his, his resume is insane, and I think when I met him, I expected um, something different, because I think it's crazy. People always described him as like the most humble person they'd ever met. And I didn't understand how you could have a resume like that and then also be so humble. But I think coming, getting to know him, I've learned that the only reason that his resume is so extensive is because of that humbleness and because of his dedication to his, his craft. Um, my special guest today is Eastbound. Please come join me. How's it going, man? So, Drew, how are you feeling today? Not too bad. How about you? I'm good. I'm my brain is exploding right now. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I usually start interviews talking to people about where music, um, when music became a part, became a part of their life, hmm. and I know for you that that was quite early. Um, like you I mean, began playing violin like pretty young. Yeah, I was like uh, like five or six when I started playing. Violin broke a string, and that inspired me to play guitar. Because <laughs> I was trying to play like a guitar, you know what I mean? And um, just been playing instruments ever since, like that kind of started it all. Like just the music. Um, were your parents musical? Um, my mom tried. <laughs> my dad, like he, he, he played some piano here and there. But yeah, that's kind of it. What do you think was motivating? Why would they put you in music so young? Um... <laughs> my mom tried to put me in like different things like tennis uh uh i think karate like like just a whole bunch of things that i was just not good at <laughs> and she was like okay you know what let me um let me try to like do music i guess and then um that ended up working how long was it until i know you started making beats on your phone like yeah. Back in you grew up in Holland, so back in Holland you were already making beats on your phone, right? Um, like a little, like I was, I was kind of more messing around with like a like this program on my computer because I, I was trying to, for some reason I was interested in just manipulating audio. Garage Band, right? Uh, this was some. Th this was back like when there were, it was some random like small little program on the computer. But when I came to Canada, that's when I got my first like iPhone and got Garage Band. I was messing around with some things on it and just made some stuff and that turned into me getting like a laptop fl studio and stuff like that um you moved here when you're 16 yes that's i think um a lot of kids i talk to like their experience is moving here quite young because their parents as soon as they're born they would move to canada that's sort of the story i hear a lot hmm. it's kind of crazy that you came here at 16 and had to sort of like learn our culture at so you're already sort of developing your own taste developing your yeah. own whatever yeah i mean it was a it was a huge change, obviously, you know, like a whole new country, new language, new everything, you know, and um, I didn't know a single person. And that, that I think that was kind of like the hardest thing at first. But um, I just noticed that everyone was very accepting and very just humble and nice and, and friendly and inviting and welcoming. And that's kind of like all I got from it, which made me like very comfortable, like very quick. And maybe able to adapt quicker too. Um, I know that you went through a co-op program. That's like a common story for a lot of kids that they they find yeah. some experience in the real world, like co-op in high school. Um, it's crazy that you were like, yeah, at, even in high school, you were working at somebody's studio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that that was that was crazy because it's. Um, I, I wanted to do something in the music field, but. Um, even like at school like they told me like oh it's quite hard to like find something like that and this was back in Brampton too so like it's not like downtown Toronto where there's some studios or things around um, but I was very adamant and I just kind of kept looking around and um, I don't know if it was me or my co-op teacher that f ended up finding it but he found like someone's like home recording studio which was like very legit um, in someone's basement and um, it ended up working out very well. Like he taught me a lot, actually. Yeah, and that's that's when I even like heard about, you know, Wonder Girls music and um, audio engineering. I didn't even know how that whole thing worked. All I knew kind of at that time was like how to make beats, and um, 
that's kind of the only thing I was doing, but that really taught me a lot. It was a really dope program. I guess meeting Wonder Girl, that changed your life. Yeah. I mean, from not only just professionally, but and your, your skill capacity, that, that totally. Yeah. Um, what are some things that you've made numerous songs with Wonder Girl? You've worked for a couple years now. Um, what's something that you learned that's not necessarily technical, not necessarily, you know, about the beats, maybe more about like the business or about just anything that you sort of taken that you still like sort of keep with you today? Um, I really like her approach to everything. She's kind of, um, you know, she kind of just lets things be and kind of like, I don't know, I, I just get the, the vibe that she kind of just goes with the flow with things and um, she kind of just lets things happen, you know, when she's in the room. She wouldn't be the person to like kind of like pipe up and say like, yo, let me play some beats, you know what I mean? Like, um, she will wait for, for you to ask to play beats kind of thing. And that, that, uh, rela that relaxed vibe that she has, that's something that I really picked up on because I thought that it was kind of like a, um, a, uh, a thing where you, you know, you kind of have to show who's the, like, you, like, um, like dominance, right? You have to show like, oh, I have something for you kind of thing. And she wouldn't do that. And that left a bigger impression on people, I think, because they're like, okay, this girl just walks in the room. is just chilling, drinking apple juice. You know what I mean? And then the next thing you know, we're asking her to play some beats. She's like, okay, well, sure. Right. And then she plays some beats and it's like the hardest thing that they've ever heard. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I, I really like that. that. That's something that I really, that I really enjoyed. And um, I've also learned that it's very important to get uh, comfortable in a studio, like wherever you are, to like just be comfortable, like w whatever that means for you kind of thing. Like for her, it's like bringing a blanket and a pillow to the studio. Every studio she goes to, you know what I mean? From other people, it can mean something else, you know? But it's like, yeah, <laughs> just being comfortable in the studio. Um, maybe for like, I know there's at least one producer here right now, like a young, aspiring producer. What about yeah. something on the, more on the technical end that you really, you still keep with you today? Um, always be prepared, you know, like always have like a USB stick, you know, like don't bring you CDs around. I don't think anyone does, but you know, <laughs> I don't think so either. <laughs> you know, but um, like, yeah, always be prepared, have your music ready because like, yo, like you'll be at a restaurant and just walk into like Young Thug you know what I mean and you don't want to come up to him and be like hey I'm a producer it's like okay cool like there's a million of you like you want to be like here here's some beats for you you know what I mean like that's that's something different and um on like a real technical standpoint I guess like um choose your equipment wisely so that you can go to different studios and always be able to play something like you never want to be in a situation where like oh what you use doesn't work in this studio kind of thing it's like oh well now we can't play beats you know always kind of have your music on you some way some form is that something you had to learn the hard way like is that like a situation where you like walked in and you like couldn't do something or you like weren't prepared I, i've had them multiple times where like i'm in a studio with, with an artist and they're trying to hear something and it's either my lap like you know my laptop wouldn't play or whatever it is or i don't have like the freaking like i iphone dongle like that thing you know like it's just little things like that and that's why like i always have like at least one in one of my backpacks like i have one of them in, like i think i have like three backpacks I have one in <laughs> each one of them to make sure wherever i go i'm always able to play music yeah that's awesome though yeah um what about i mean i think everybody that's here today knows like the biggest thing on your resume is a massive Travis Scott record. Um, I think it's so cool that a record that has is now multi-platinum, it's reached you know, countries all over the world, it's been played at the biggest festivals. It's funny how that started with like a dinner at the keg. <laughs> that you I just, know. You heard, it's some, you just heard yeah. something and you're like, oh, what's that? You Shazam it. And yeah. then years later now, we're sitting here talking about it's like a just, multi platinum it, record. It's the energy of good music, you know, like where we're just eating. And then um, it's, it's those ones when you hear music and you're like, yo, like this sounds dope. Like whatever I'm hearing right now sounds, sounds good, you know. And obviously shout out to Lee Fields, which is uh, the person on the sample. I think they're doing a documentary on um, him because of that, the song and everything. Wow, that's amazing. Um, yeah, and it's like. I heard the record, like we both heard the record and we're just like, yo, this is dope. And we just flipped it. And yeah, it, it is really crazy how that, you know, can turn into something like that. It's, it's mind blowing. Um, I imagine that that once people started figuring out 
who had produced the track. And I know that for a while people were like, oh, who produced this track? And once people started figuring out, I mean, I'm sure things started changing pretty quickly. Um, I mean, one, one big thing that I learned from something like that is that at the end of the day, like who really like who produced it doesn't like necessarily matter as much as um, the fact that I didn't know that that song was going to be a hit. You know what I mean? It's like you never know when what song is going to be a hit. So whenever I, I make music now, I always make sure I kind of just give it my 100 percent because who knows, maybe not giving it my 100 percent is going to, you know, make make the opportunity fail or. I just feel like I always have to give it my all now because I, I wasn't even like that was another beat to me like that was just I made it it was like 20 minutes and I finished it sent it to Wonder Girl and then she added her stuff to it and um, and that was it you know what I mean and um, you know you, you you'll never sit down and say yo today I'm gonna make a hit record like th- that you might think you know but that's not gonna happen it's usually that day we're like. Uh, I really feel like making beats. Ah, fine, I'll make one. And then you make a beat and that ends up being something crazy because you're not even really, you know, paying attention to it. But yeah, it just, it was a really, really great, um, great energy, even when, when it just dropped. And, you know, it was mind blowing. Like I was very new to the country, let alone new to the music industry, kind of new to everything. So seeing that actually coming into fruition, like a dream that I had is just, you know, I can only thank God, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, faith is like a part of your life, is it not? I think when yeah. we met, you were, uh, I think, just finishing a fast. I think yeah. you were just finishing when we met. Yeah. And you were talking about how, you know, you, that even if you were to brush your teeth in the morning and you like brush your tongue and you like um, cough like, up a little yeah. bit, yeah. that's like, that, that's breaking the fast. Like, yeah. I, I didn't even know that. that, like, that's, yeah. that was totally I didn't know it either. <laughs> <laughs> So like my manager told me that, but um, yeah, I followed the Islamic faith, um, have been for, I think, a uh, year and a half now, something like that. It's been beautiful, you know, um, still learning as I'm, as I'm going, but it's a beautiful faith. Um, what's, yeah, I, I keep kind of going back to this. What's something that sort of like keeps, that always resonates that you keep getting, you keep going back to? Something that in terms of the last year or so. And in terms of what, though? In studying your faith and in learning the cult, how, what, what's something that um, sort of keeps resonating, you keep running into, it's like, oh, right. Patience. Mm. Patience, because it's kind of um, not really a cheat code, more like um, it's an um, underestimated tool in life. You know, like if someone honks at you, like, why are you honking back kind of thing? Like, why, why are you letting that energy affect yours? You know what I mean? Even though you can just be patient. You know, like sometimes what happens when you're impatient is you start to assume as well. So you're on the phone with someone and, you know, they're not responding to you and you're like, yo, what's happening? You get mad and you're like, oh, you know, I just hit my toe or whatever it is. You know what I mean? You never yeah. know the reason behind something. And because of that, it's very important to always be patient. And that's something that the Islamic faith stresses a lot, you know, patience. And I guess just the golden rule, right? Like treating others like how you would like to be treated because, you know, who doesn't like that? kind of thing um, I wanted to ask about your work with well I was I think my favorite production that I've ever heard from you is your stuff with Sean Leon <laughs> same. Like that's my favorite yeah, work same. you've ever made yeah I, I don't know it's, it's like you know I think even for like a lot of upcoming producers what's important to understand is that it's not all about placements I think it's even more about you finding an artist that you click with that you have a that you can create something with and build on that, you know? And um, in my case, I really found Sean to be that person because whenever we just made music, it, it was just, um, it's just magical, you know? It's like, I play a beat, he's like, yo, I mess with this, is the mic hot? And we just go kind of thing. And then it just turns into whatever it turns into, you know? And um, the vibes has always been good. Um, And that is also my favorite work, to be honest, too. Like, when I listen back to my favorite work, I wouldn't say that it's any of the, you know, records with, like, I guess, like, A-list artists. It's Sean, because I I feel that there's more story, there's more realness to it. You know, like, he pulled up to my mom's basement and when I moved out and 
wherever I am, like he'll pull up and we're just making music and we'll just make it work. And, you know, I always pulled up to his events too and see him perform the songs that we recorded like a week ago. Like it's, you know, it's, it's just very, it's, 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 I, I just love the dynamic, you know, and it's, uh, we just make great music and it's, this is only the beginning in my opinion. How did you get to know him? Like, what are your, what are your memories of like when you first met Sean Leon? Uh, the first time I met Sean Leon was at Sunny Diamond Studio. I was there with, uh, with Wonder Girl and, um, he was just kind of like <laughs> pacing back and forth, thinking of lines. Like I, I obviously didn't know his process back then, so this guy's just pacing back and forth, thinking about lines and just you know cussing really loud and just swearing because he can't come up with the line. And he goes back in the booth <laughs> and then he spits another bar. And I just like I just noticed that whenever this guy would go in the booth, it sounded mixed, like it sounded pristine, like like gold, like it was already good. And then he would come out and kind of. You know, I was like, oh, no, I can do it better. And I, I just kind of liked how um, how much of a perfectionist he is, because, like, I am too. And, um, yeah, and I played him some beats too, I think, I'm pretty sure. And then we just kind of, you know, exchanged contacts and kept working from then since. And then 81 was when we really figured out, like, oh, we got something here. You know what I mean? Like, that's when, yeah, that that, that was a crazy record. Like, that record, yeah, it's, it, it's like, futuristic, because it's, like, that was made of, like, 2017 or is it yeah and and interestingly enough um even when i played the beat for him it was an old beat like when i yeah. when i played it for him it was already old beat you know and shout out to bijan he sent me the sample um mm. we and then they even made a part two to it you know because and that that was a very futuristic sound like I, I was just i don't know i was just messing around with everything trying to make it sounding as weird as possible and turn it into something dope the last Sean Leon album, uh, The Death of Sean Leon, mm-hmm. uh, that was produced almost entirely by just you and uh, another producer, Harrison. No. Was not? No. So that was uh, mastered by me. Oh. I did, I did the ma- yeah, I did the mastering on I I, I did um, some production on one of the records, but that album, just like the sound of it, um, me and Sean both knew, like, that's not kind of our that's not where we fit like our muse our dynamic our music together that's not where that fits um but he knew my setup is crazy so he just told me master it you know and just mastered it for him but um there was this one record on it that kind of teased something that's coming up so that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> i uh you're speaking about like his his perfectionism i i saw that picture the other day of one of the pictures of him with kanye west mm-hmm. and someone had responded to the tweet saying it's because he had never compromised and i think that's just so yeah it's like you only get to that level of artistry in putting the value in your work and not compromising on what that yeah it's very true no i i he and he consistently still inspires me like every single day i link up with him like things he would say his demeanor um things he would remember things he would mention things he wouldn't mention uh, how we respond to certain things that you would say, like controversial things or things that are kind of like, you know, like he's not um, he's not a person that really thinks about the now. He, he really thinks ahead, you know, and, uh, you know, he has a daughter and he's, he's really focused on that. Like he kind of has more of a, a Jay-Z mentality rather than like a, you know, just an artist for now kind of thing. Like he doesn't want to be an artist for now. He doesn't want the hype. He doesn't want you to listen to his music and say you're a fan. He wants you to be a fan and listen to the music kind of thing. He wants you to really be, um, he kind of wants you to, wants you to be like in the car with him on his trip of whatever he's doing, his artistry. You know what I mean? And he sticks to that. He's like in character at all times. And not even in character, like that's just how he is. You know what I mean? Like he just moves like that, yeah. Um, I don't know if everybody knows this, but yeah, like your, your engineering is, also at the level that people are wanting to get you to be an engineer on the records, not just a producer. Yeah. Um, tell me about working on the Six Buzz project. Because I imagine hearing some of those records for the first time, you're like, holy, it's so crazy to hear this guy with this guy or with mm-hmm. like, this artist with this artist that you'd never think they would collab. Or yeah. What was it like getting, getting those files sent to you? Um, I guess like I just really, I was really excited that I got to do something for the city because like I w- I'm... You know, I, I felt like I was really welcomed here. And, you know, that's something that I appreciate so much. So, like, when I was a part of that, I really wanted to make sure I did my best on it. Um, 
a lot of artists I was actually not even that familiar with at the time. I just I just made sure that I did my research after, obviously. And um, but a lot of the records were just dope, and I just um, this was the first time I was also like very um, heavily involved with production, mixing, and mastering, like all three of it. You know, and you know, I don't think there's a single album out there that went through you know no issues whatsoever. So obviously there were some hiccups, but it taught me a lot. You know, like how to handle those kinds of hiccups and how to prepare for different mistakes that may happen not on your end. You know what I mean? Um, I love what it turned out to be. You know, I love the result of it, and uh, the listening party was super dope too. Um, it was a really dope process too. Like, the, like the artists, the artists that I seen on it, like now knowing who they are, like really knowing who they are, being like, oh shoot, like they were on the same record together, and you know what I mean. It was, it was, it was dope um, altogether. Shout out Six Buzz, yeah. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's one of those projects. I think when it came out, I think people didn't really know what to think. Like it just, it was so unexpected. I mean, you don't really often see like a page kind of like blowing up and just because of that I'm not saying just because of that but you know you don't really often see like an Instagram page blowing up and then saying like hey let's drop an album and it actually being like something good to listen to you know and um, like my manager is involved heavily with Six Buzz and he like initially brought brought the idea to me and I said like you know hell yeah I want to be part of that and um, yeah it's 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 different you know like I don't I haven't really heard of that before like an Instagram page dropping an album i mean it's you know it's different but like that's what i i really liked about it um did that make you want to do other projects where you had that kind of control over like the production and the mastering and the mixing i love being part of all like i love being part of the whole process from writing to recording to instrumentation um mixing mastering the whole the whole nine like the whole thing I can I can make a record from start to finish and I love it too because it's um I, f- I don't know I feel like all 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 those parts of making a record um are equally as important and if one of them fails um that has a huge impact on the record like if you have a dope writer you have dope instruments you have a really great producer you have a great mixer but you don't have a good mastering engineer then it's going to sound good but not as good as it could or the same thing but you don't have a good writer or a good mixer like all, all those parts really matter and I care about those parts equally so I really make sure I get it right you know um, as I was saying like, on, when I was introducing you your resume is like quite extensive now you've got quite like a number of like major label artists like independent artists like sort of new artists like on the rise yeah um, what's something that you've really learned about the, the back end like the business end of your oh. production like you know because I'm sure that you this interview just got extended by two hours but you're just <laughs> asking that question no, I'm kidding um, a lot man it's um, I guess the biggest thing that I, that I could take from it is to to everyone that wants to get into the music industry like know the business like really really know the business because it's going to bite you in your butt if you don't like later on and, and you're going to find out at the worst moment probably you know what i mean and the information is out there you know like you can find books like there's this book called um all you need to know about the music industry for example you know like you can find you can find information out there to um to know your stuff but especially for producers because you know we're kind of more in the background we're not artists um we need to know you need to know like where do i claim my money how does it come in where does it come in from like who collects it who takes a piece right like how does that work because people just like oh i need a manager it's like do you like why what is he going to do for you you know or i need a publisher i need a distributor like you need to really know what each role is and like how that works and um i learned the hard way you know it's like i and I think that's a good way of learning because you really, you know, understand the impact. But, um, yeah, it's super, it's so, so important to know. I think equally as important as being talented. I don't want to put you in the spot too much, but um, I I always find that we we learn a lot better from failures than we do from yeah, you know, talking about success. Yeah, absolutely. So I was wondering if you could sort of share, you don't have to be too specific or whatever, but there's one f- failure or one r- misstep that you, hindsight 2020, right? So one something you would have sort of told yourself or taught yourself. Well, um, this one time I was in the studio with this, um, with a 
you know, major artist and um, I was shy. I, I didn't feel like I was, um, I didn't want to be like, hey, can I play some beats? Because I thought that was annoying, not realizing that it's actually the opposite. You know, if you're quiet, they're not going to let you play any beats. If You kind of almost have to, you know, say like, hey, I have some stuff to play kind of thing. Or, um, or me just not knowing the business side of uh, production, right? And kind of being blindsided by emails that I'm getting from publishers or labels and then not really knowing what to do. I'm like, hey, what's a W8 Ben or what's a what's it this or what's it that and because i didn't know those things sometimes it would drag out a process and you could like lose out on opportunities like that um and those things have happened to me in different capacities you know and that that's like a good good way of learning because it makes you realize like shoot like i have to get on top of my stuff you know um had were you already sort of in the mix of that before you would start cycling back and, oh, I need to get these things figured out. Or you sort of, at Wonder Girl, sort of steered you in the right direction before you'd gotten in that mix? Um, I feel like... I, I definitely think, I, like, when I met met her, like, she was definitely more first on, on the industry and the business side of things. But, you know, we were both young. I was young, you know? And um, you're kind of, like, blinded by excitement. Like, you're kind of just like, oh, let's make music, you know? No sleep, you know, staying up all night looking for samples. Did she but have the Jay Z placement by that point? Yes. Yeah. So I mean, every session you're getting and you're thinking like this is like it's like it's like an energy. It's like high. Yeah. Like uh, I mean, um, I was very very happy because like I I I, uh, I followed her on Twitter initially and emailed some beats of mine right, and um, she told me that she liked them. I was like, oh shit, she, you know, she likes my my beats, and um, then we just started working. So like, there was definitely pressure. Um, good pressure, you know, for me to like make good music. And um, like I said, you're kind of blind, blindsided by excitement and you're not really thinking about like, okay, once this record becomes big, how am I going to get my money, right? Like, where is it coming from? Blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And um, that's something I definitely did not think about because like I said, you're just, you know, going with the flow. You're kind of just making music and if it lands a record then you're like, oh, great, I'm a millionaire. But you know, it's not like that. Like it's it's not like that. Not. Like, no, it's not like that. You know, it's like you have to really know where it's coming from. I mean, you could be a millionaire, you know, after that, but it's like it, it depends on how you do the business, and that's a very fragile part of it. You know, it's like you can have a huge record, but depending on how you do the business, you can either make a million bucks or actually nothing. You know, so. Um, I wonder what your parents' impression of you was when you first started expressing these interests in like because they'd put you in like violin thinking oh he's gonna like and then it started playing guitar and then it was like making songs on your laptop and then it was like rap music yeah like, how quickly how when when what was the point when they were like oh we understand this like my mom still doesn't understand it <laughs> <laughs> um you know like she still doesn't understand it but Obviously, it's, it's super technical for her. It's like, oh, you're making music and then the artist goes on your beat and like kind of that's as far as she gets. But she's always, you know, been so supportive. And, you know, I attended Metalworks in Mississauga um, and that was with Wonder Girl and Dax and a few of my homies. Shout out to AM and Don Darion and Blux. And um, we were all in class together. You know what I mean? And um, I remember like bringing my mom to see the to see the school and she was like wow like you know these are big studios and she's still not really understanding what's going on but to her it's like wow like you know you're doing something and then eventually like you know everyone was dropping out i was thinking of dropping out because i'm like yo i don't i don't get it like i, I didn't see myself i didn't have that, that same passion like i was kind of losing it almost because of that you know and um eventually i had to actually bring it to my mom like hey like i'm gonna drop out i'm gonna take beats serious and I was very scared. I, I, I remember the night like it was yesterday. Like, I was very scared to tell her. So I walked upstairs and I told her, like, hey, mom, you know, like, I think I'm going to drop out and I'm going to just pursue my beats. And her reaction was like, you know what? You better take it serious. But sure, like, but you better take it really, really serious. And, you know, I did. And then, you know, I think, um, you know, sometime later, then, you know, Anado dropped. And that's when, you know, she was very proud, obviously, but... Um, yeah, she, I don't know, like, she, she always mentioned to me that she kind of seen something in me, you know, when I was playing music, because, like, I was playing in church, you know, I was playing bands, I was playing, like, I had, like, three bands by myself, two in school, you know, like, I was, I've always been a music kid, like, she knew that. Do you remember what your bands were called? 
Uh, <laughs> like, was it like rock? Was it like metal? Yeah. Yeah, like rock metal. Like, yeah, like all the way. Like, I was, I was like introduced to hip hop when I came to Canada. That's when I found out about Drake. That's when I found out about. Word. I never really knew hip hop. Like, I kind of just listened to radio and just rock music. You know what I mean? But, oh, that's so terrible. I don't really remember the names like that. No, I don't. Oh, it's a long Hol- time ago. Holland. Yeah, this is back in Holland. Yeah. Word. Yeah. Um, what, what's a moment that maybe wouldn't be so obvious to people that have sort of like studied your career or read your interviews or whatever? What's a moment that you're really proud of that's not like, you know, getting a multi-platinum record? Because I think that's what everybody looks at and goes like, that's like, that's like the top of your resume. So I think people sort of de- like they defer to that. Yeah, no. Um, the thing so far that I'm the proudest of, I would say, is um, I started teaching. So um, my manager, you know, and me, like we we're very heavily involved in, with this company called mystand.org, so you, you can check that out. Um, but we do mentorship programs, and uh, you know, one day we're just kind of talking about, you know, because like, I have a very high passion for it, you know, mixing and mastering and stuff like that. And he's like, yo, wouldn't it be cool if you were to teach kids, you know, how to mix and master? And um, I was like, yeah, that would be cool. And then that turned in, you know, from a conversation to like reality eventually, and um, started teaching like youth, youth in the city. and. I just love every bit of it. Like, I love teaching, you know, I love seeing the results. I, I love hearing them come back and be like, yo, like that tip you just gave me, like that changed my whole, like I never knew, you know, and um, I just love that. And we're actually in the process of, um, of expanding the program and, and doing it again and making it bigger. And um, f- like when it comes to like a, on a personal level, that's what I'm the proudest of so far because I'm actually using my knowledge and my, um, my abilities to paid for it like giving back to you know the community and giving back to the people that you know didn't really have the opportunity because like I went to Metalworks you know what I mean because I thought that was my opportunity imagine now another kid is going to think the same thing but meanwhile there's a program out there that you know I'm running for free that they can just pull up to and just get gems you know what I mean and that that means the most to me that's so sick man I love that <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thanks Dude, thank you for doing this. No, this absolutely. So no, thank you for, you know, bringing me out here and shout out to, you know, C- CF, right? Yeah, CF. Okay, yeah. Yeah, shout out to CF for the space. Um, yeah. Shout out to everybody that's yeah. come and watched. Um, oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much, man. Thank you, man. Okay. This has been the Drew York Show. Thank uh, you. Until next time.